questions. So we'll we'll put them put, put them in as you think of them, and we'll answer them all at the end. We also have CAR CEO Abby Tamman available to add extra detail to answers as needed. And uh, I should mention that today's session is being recorded, so it's going to be available on the CAR's YouTube channel later in the week. All right, and you can see where that is here on the SSO dashboard under CAR social media all the way to the right. CAR TV, now we have a TV. <laughs> um, okay, let's get started. So the decision to pursue the data share agreement, which launched yesterday, does not mean CAR is merging or even plans to merge with Right MLS. That decision was carefully considered by the board of director as the best method to improve one of the most important services that CAR provides to its member, which is the multiple listing services, the multiple listing service. The duration of the data share agreement is three years. Um, the benefits of the data share include additional data analysis to better serve your clients, access to historical and current property information in neighboring areas, a broader marketing outreach for all of your listings, as we were mentioning with Jim, an expanded net of available homes for sale, and the possibility of eliminating an additional MLS subscription. <clears throat> if you so choose. So the data share agreement is going to allow car subscribers access to all active listings, as well as three years of historical residential data from the following bright MLS areas you see on the screen right now. So you'll notice it doesn't go all the way to, you know, Prince William and Northern Northern Virginia. You know, you've got Culpeper, Madison, Orange, Page, Spotsylvania, and then on the right-hand side, that's what we have already for um, Paragon. So it's added, um, and I checked, so it's added about 350 more listings to the active inventory in Paragon right now, based on the numbers that I, you know, I've been keeping track of the numbers, based on the number I checked this morning. It was around 900 before, and it's a little over 1250 now. So that's the net effect that that has had as of yesterday. In exchange, Bright MLS subscribers will access our active listings as well as three years of historical residential data listed by car subscribers. So those are the counties that you see on the right here. Um, the following categories are included in active listings. We have residential, multifamily, and land. So this does not include commercial. The data share will not have any impact on any of a car's current products or services, which includes the single sign-on SSO dashboard, transaction desk, and super lockbox. There's no changes there. Um, <clears throat> now, many of you may subscribe to both car MLS and bright MLS. So this data share agreement may allow you to opt out of one of those subscriptions. That's completely up to you and your broker. Um, that's a decision that you can make. You can still keep both of them if you so choose. Note that it is possible to have super key service with, with CAR, even if you don't have a CAR MLS subscription, you can have just the super e key subscription if you just decide to go with Bright only. The details of these services option can be found in the Bright MLS data share FAQ document. And Ali is going to enter the link um, to that FAQ document in the chat window right now. So you'll be able to just click on that, go straight to those um, FAQs. Okay. All right, so now that I've gone through kind of the high level of what this agreement kind of means, I wanna go into some best practices. So the names of the car MLS fields, the Paragon fields, and those of Bright MLS are not have a one-to-one -one match. So you need to be sure to, to review the field called Bright Supplemental Information for any inf additional information on the listing that doesn't exist in the Paragon field. You might have, I, I did it yesterday, you might have to add that field to your listing view for it to show up. Um, that's what I had to do. So I did it, you know, it, 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 if you customize the fields in the report view that you have, you can add the um, bright supplemental information as one of the fields. And, and you can, the best place to put it is in, the, in between the, the remarks and the agent notes. That's a good place to put that. It fits in there for the, the more extent, you know, the agent reports. 
Also, um, if you have a document to attach to a listing, it has to be in a PDF format for it to be available on a listing in Bright MLS. So you can't upload Word documents or JPEG photos of the big plats of the subdivision or something. It all has to be PDFs for it to show up in Bright. Okay. So one of the most important questions to address is if you have an MLS subscription for both Car MLS, which is Paragon, and Bright MLS, do you still need to enter the listing in both systems? That's what you did before. When you had two subscriptions, you had to enter it twice. We actually ask that you enter a listing in either the Car Paragon MLS or Bright MLS, depending on the area in which the listing is located. So if it's an Albemarle County, enter it in Paragon, okay? That will ensure that you have all the required field for that listing, such as the geographical information, the schools, et cetera. And it will eliminate the need to enter in both system and it's going to avoid duplicate information. So the listing doesn't show up twice. Um, since they're already pulling up from Paragon, um, you, know, you don't need to enter it in Bright as well, otherwise you're gonna have two listings next to each other for the same place. As a reminder, the MLS subscribers will be held to the rules and regulations as well as the fines and violation fees of the MLS in which the listing was entered. So if you enter listing in Bright MLS, you must abide by the Bright MLS rules and regulations. If you enter it in Paragon, you have to abide to with the CAR MLS rules and regulations. Our MLS rules and regulations, as well as the very important document, how to avoid a fine, can be found in Paragon under documents, followed by the CAR MLS rules and regulation folders. And you've got this on the slide, it shows you exactly where that is when you hit the, um, the, the document section of Paragon, okay? Um, also, I wanna remind you that CAR realtors can allow non-CAR realtors access to a car lockbox for a specific date during a specific time period, anywhere between two and 72 hours for an individual listing. So it's a one day access code to our Supra eKey system. Okay, so that if somebody from the Bright area wants to come down and take a look at one of our listings, but they only have the Bright um, lockbox system, they, you can give them access for just a day. That functionality has actually been set up a while ago to assist agents in facilitating the showing of properties for agents outside of CAR. So it's, it's a pretty simple system. They have to download the app and, um, and then it just, they actually use their phone as an app to enter um, for the times that you have set out and, and specified. The Supra key timed access instruction can be found in Paragon under documents, followed by the car Supra information folder. Again, that's on your screen right now, okay? Now, um, many of you know that our Paragon system is shared with the Greater Augusta Association of Realtors, SCAR, and the Harrisonburg Rockingham Association of Realtors, HRAR. Those association will not receive the additional areas from the Bright MLS. They are not included in this agreement. As of now, there are no plans for the neighboring associations to enter into the data share agreement with the Bright MLS. So those are not affected at all, okay? All right, so I know that was a lot of information and I speak very fast. So to be honest, all the contents that I went over is um, included in the Bright MLS News webpage and the FAQ document. So you can see that's that orange button towards the bottom of the car portal links. Um, so if you need to review this at a slower pace, go ahead and take a look at that. <laughs> Another great resource you should review is the list of Paragon changes made in anticipation for the Bright MLS share, and that is just to the right of the Bright MLS News button, also on the CAR portal links. A list of those changes are, can be found in the 2021 MLS changes webpage that's on the dashboard. And you can see this is a screen share of what that actually looks like, okay? That's all I have as far as um, general information. So let's go ahead and open it up to uh, questions and answers. Ali, can we... Can you read the questions um, that were submitted? Do you have, do we have any questions? 
We do. Um, let's see here, make sure I don't miss any of them. So one question is, I currently subscribe to Bright in addition to CAR. What can't I do if I get rid of my Bright subscription? If I wanted to list a property in Fredericksburg, for example, I could put the listing in CAR and it would show up in Bright. So what would be the point of keeping both? I understand you can't recommend anything but, and it's up to me and my broker, but I'm just trying to determine what the limitations would be if I dropped Bright. Um, and Abby, you know, feel free to jump in also. I think that um, because as you saw, the, the, the list of, of counties that is included in the data share is not the entirety of the bright footprint. Um, you're not, you're, you, it's not gonna be showing up in the Northern. So if you enter something in for Fredericksburg in Paragon, I'm, I'm not gonna show Abby actually, because we, we recommend that you enter it in the place where it's located. So Correct. can you enter a Fredericksburg listing in Paragon and have it show up in bright in Fredericksburg? Currently not not now we don't that was not one of the counties that was included in the data share so we don't have all the components necessary for that listing to be entered in its entirety in the car system so if you are still intending to list in the fredericksburg area my suggestion is to keep that bright subscription so you can continue to enter in bright um, and have it be available for those folks and that would not be one of the counties that would then show up in car all right. Um, the second question is, are most bright users using super lockboxes? No. They are not. Most of the bright subscribers, all the ones in the counties that we're receiving have central lockbox. And those are the only questions that were submitted in the chat. Um, do we want to open it up for verbal questions? Sure, sure. We had some good discussion before we started pressing record. I'm guessing that folks have some other stuff that might be on their mind that we'd be happy to answer. And Kelly uh, just submitted a question. Is the MLS data that we are sharing going to going only to the association that includes the counties that we are receiving or are they going to NOVA? Any, it's my understanding that anybody in the Bright MLS can see the data that's been entered even outside the counties that we're receiving from Bright. So what does Bright MLS include? What areas does Bright MLS include? I'm not, I'm not uh, aware of their reach. It actually goes all the way up to New Jersey. Um, let me see if I can, Kelly, I'll see you drop a link in chat to get to the bright footprint. Um, so they go, they come as far down as Culpeper, they go New Jersey, Pennsylvania. So they go, they go pretty high up. So our data is being shared with all of those areas all the way to New Jersey, but we're only getting just the counties near us. The neighboring counties, yes. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Because of the data share, it was not our intention to expand the, the listing footprint up to New Jersey. Uh, based on feedback from the subscribers, we felt that the neighboring counties were the most important to capture as part of the data share. So why are they getting our information? That we have, we have five counties in a city and they're getting that information and we're getting back we're getting back the information for that area plus an additional five counties. So it's almost a one for one. Um, we didn't anticipate that you would be doing business in Philadelphia or New Jersey. Um, we felt that the neighboring counties were the most important. Yes, I understand that, but I'm just more concerned about uh, Northern Virginia agents coming here to sell property here since they have our information though we don't have theirs. Uh, I'm not sure I understand why those additional areas are receiving our information if we're only receiving five counties. It, well, I, <laughs> I know Tealy's on board, Tealy as a past member. Um, Anne, if you, if you have any I, suggestions as part of an answer. Um, Kelly, we just wanted to make sure that you could expand your footprint to better support your customers. Um, and the Bright MLS folks would do the same. I don't, I don't know that we're gonna have folks from New Jersey and 
far reaches of Northern Virginia coming down, um, but it's available and you now have access to their contact information. Um, so you'd be able to work directly with them to negotiate for, with your clients, so. Yeah, and also there is no, there's no way to, the fact that Bright has a much larger footprint than Paragon is something we have no control over. What we shared is, you know, they're sharing five counties, we're sharing five counties. But the fact that, you know, we can't say only the people in those five counties are allowed to see our five counties. There's no way for Bright to do that. So, you know, this is the compromise that we had to make that they're, they're a much bigger MLS to start with. And we can't, it, it's not feasible. There's no, there's no process by which we would only allow peer people who live in those five counties to see that. Once it's in Bright, it's in Bright. Just like mm -hmm. once it's in Paragon, it's in Paragon. Anybody who's got Paragon can see any of the five counties. So it was more, you know, five county for five counties in terms mm -hmm. of sharing information. Okay. Who selected I'm just the five counties? I'm sorry? Who selected those five counties versus like Fredericksburg and the, and the counties that are just north that we typically use a lot? That was negotiated. The, the executive committee and board negotiated that with the Bright MLS team. Hmm. Okay, we have questions. another, yeah, we have another question submitted in the chat. Um, in Bright MLS, showing time allows agents to schedule through the MLS by clicking on a link or through HomeSnap. Is that going to be an option with Paragon? Not at this time. Um, CAR is not currently considering the Showing Time app. I'm seeing more agents actually using the Showing Time app on their own, but it's not it's not a Paragon functionality. But I'm I'm starting to see agents in Paragon use Showing Time on their own. We should mention um, the Bright MLS data is also in Home Snap for CAR. Um, you'll see that all of that data in there. Um, another question, um, I have a concern that escalation clauses uh, may get even more of a factor than it already is considering the buyers from Northern Virginia and what they are used to. That's good for the sellers. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, that's- I don't think we can control that. Mm -mm. No. By the way, I'll, I wanted to mention that in the last year since COVID, I've had eight or 10 Northern Virginia and Washington agents uh, come down and look at my properties. And of course, I've had to let them in at different times. And, and that trend is definitely continuing. I just had a, you know, a, a Middleburg agent, but I kind of agree with Kelly. I would like to see us consider moving at least up to Gainesville or somewhere, you know, up to Northern Virginia, maybe not the metro area, but certainly those counties, those people are looking at our, particularly farms in the states down here as much as they're looking at theirs in Middleburg. And I'd like to have access to those properties so I could be calling them as well. Because I think people, we're getting in people from California, New York, et cetera. They're willing to look there as well as here. And you know we're somewhat penalized by this agreement without being able to access that data, without going to the individual websites of the companies and then you know getting the data that way. So maybe if you guys could say who do you contact about maybe expanding slightly. Mm -hmm. I know it's not an easy thing you do immediately, but right, right. Well, Jim, I would say that this data share was brought around based on the feedback that we're getting here today three or four or five years ago, you wanted access to additional information. So it's important for you to continue to provide those questions um, right. and let us know what is going to serve your needs so that the board can open up those conversations with Bright. So I would say that would be one of the questions that we'll add to the list that as we roll out the Bright data share, what are the successes? What are the ways we can improve? And if the request is more counties, then we certainly make that part of the dialogue with the Bright folks. We can't promise it, but it's, if it's going to be a call from the membership, then we'd be happy to make it a discussion point. So we can address it to you as the point person? Sure, sure. Okay. 
Okay. Absolutely. You can email any one of the staff. You can email support at car.com. We'd be happy to receive your feedback on how to make it a more smoother transition or an increased transition. Good. Hey, I just want to have a question. Sure. I have, hey, um, hi, how are you? Um, I actually have, uh, you know, of course, IDX and most, those, most people do uh, mm -hmm. in regards to our website. Mm -hmm. And so our personal website or whatever. Um, if I search in uh, Culpepper or, um, you know, anything like that, that's shared, but it's not something that I'm a member of. Uh, so like, I'm not a member of, um, you know, Bright. I'm not a member of G-R-A-R or H-R-A-R, uh, mm -hmm. but my, um, and the website um, does not pick it up unless I am a member. So is that, is that an IDX thing if you're from a personal website thing where I'd have to still become a member of the other associations in order to do the IDX to, the, to my personal website? Your personal website would pick up the, um, the car Paragon listings and it should include the right data as well. Okay, all right. Okay. I mean, I'm kind of looking here in Culpeper County and I can get Waynesboro, mm -hmm. but I'm looking in Culpeper County, for instance, which I think is one of them, right? That we just yes. picked up. Mm -hmm. And I guess because it just happened yesterday, maybe <laughs> it's not showing up. Yes, all the IDX feeds were updated yesterday to include the, the additional data. So if you still have questions about what your particular feed um, is or is not showing, I would suggest emailing support at car.com or calling the office and we can help take a look at that with you. Okay, thank you so much. Absolutely. In fact, I'll type that um, email address in the chat. Abby, what about cooperation? Just because everyone in Bright sees it, does that mean that we are, uh, yes. you have to move on to the boards or does that just automatically guarantee cooperation? It does. Um, we have adjusted our rules and regs to make to ensure that there's cooperation and compensation. If there's listings um, included in either of those, there is there is an implied offer of cooperation and compensation. Both but ways. that's just for those five counties, not that everybody that can see it all the way up north, or is that all the way up north? I would say it, in, it would include all the Bright subscribers because they are subscribers to the Bright MLS and we are receiving Bright MLS data it would be all subscribers. But that doesn't go the other way. Yeah, yes, we, we would then, as part of their rules and regs, be offering cooperation and compensation for car listings entering into but, the car MLS. Or but does that mean that we have, right. so, so we have um, uh, cooperation for anything even that's in Bright, no matter whether it's in our five counties or not? I mean, you're saying, if I understand it, we're only seeing information in Bright of five counties, mm -hmm. but more than five counties are seeing our information. Mm -hmm. So let's pretend like New Jersey. So are we guaranteeing New Jersey, who's not in our five, because but they're still seeing us, are we mm -hmm. guaranteeing the equation? That, that is my understanding, yes. And they're guaranteeing us, even though we can't see their information, they're guaranteeing us cooperation? I see, Pat Woodhelm, you and you were as part of the MLS group reviewing the MLS rules and regs. Would you like to unmute yourself to jump in? I see you have your hand raised. I don't think I can assure that we can get cooperation and compensation, but I will assure you that if you don't have a license to practice in that area, it ain't gonna make any difference. And the same thing happens from somebody in New Jersey who sees something down here. If they can't practice in Virginia, cooperation and compensation is not available because you can't accept it. Well, maybe New Jersey was a bad example. What about Northern Virginia? My understanding is if we can see the entry and it doesn't have any exclusions, which people are allowed to do, then the cooperation and compensation is offered. But Abby, maybe we should check that out to, to make certain that people uh, have that assurance. But we can certainly do that. Please remember for all of us, 
the borders of Virginia apply unless we have licenses in other jurisdictions. Pat, does that apply to a referral fee as well or not? No. Okay. No, you can get all the referrals fee you want from all your friends in New Jersey. Florida, whatever, yeah. Mm -hmm. And we have another question in the chat. Um, is there any plan to do a data share agreement with Richmond MLS? That is not currently in discussion, no. All right, is that all? I know we have, we had 30 minutes planned for this and we're at the 30 minute mark. So I'm not sure if there are any other questions, um, but I guess if there's no other question, does anybody else have any other questions? And where's and, that link gonna be posted that Abby put up briefly at? Where can I find that link? Um, it's in the chat. Can you look at your chat, chat window? Oh yeah, I see a little number there. There's, okay. there's support at car.com. And if you, Jim, if you log into carmls.com, it'll take you to the single sign on dashboard. There's yeah. links for Bright in the car portal there, section okay. of the SSO. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Abby Hi. or Ann? Yes. yes, Pat. Where can our participants here find any of these updated answers that we are going to try to find for them? Are we going to have another session like this or will we put it in FAQs? Because there were some good questions here that mm -hmm. should be answered. Yes, absolutely. We'll continue to update the FAQs and we're doing it chronologically. So we'll drop them to the bottom so you know where to find the most recent information. And we'll also, we'll also continue to put messages in news group and on our Facebook, our closed Facebook group. So we'll continue to try and provide incremental updates as well. And we just have uh, just a comment um, regarding cooperation, just pick up the phone and ask the agent. We can still speak to folks despite all of this automation. A good reminder good during COVID. Good news, Abby, guess what? What's that? It refreshed enough several times and it's popping up Culpeper County, so forth. Good, good, so, excellent. Yeah. Things, have, things have refreshed enough to where you're gonna see the bright data. That's great, yeah. good, awesome. Well, the car, the car staff is available to you via the phone or email. Um, we can also make appointments if you need to come by the office. So please don't hesitate to contact us, reach out. We'd be happy to provide more information and more resources so that you feel more confident with with the Bright Data Share. Thank you for participating today. Thanks everyone. Thank you, Thank you all. You guys are awesome. Make Excellent. sure you share that information with your colleagues. There's a lot of information there and uh, make sure you pass that the information along and tell them they can look at the video also if they want some uh, to, to listen to the quick Q&A as well. Um, as we said, the video is gonna be on YouTube. All right. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Take care everybody. Thank you.